Welcome to Andy's Corner HVAC, where we say what we want and don't care what the rest think. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That way you get notifications every time a new video comes out. The new books are available on Amazon for Kindle or paperback. The link will be in the description below. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, I'm glad you joined me today. I, I want to talk about a couple of things, but first I want to apologize about my background back here. I know it's plain and drab and all kinds of stuff. It's just a blank wall. Uh, we are under construction in our home office right now, so it's a really echoey um, and I don't have much of a backdrop or anything going on. So uh, we're going to work with what we got. Uh, pretty soon it'll be better. But today I want to talk about burners or furnace burners specifically. Uh, there's a lot of different types out there, but the main ones you see anymore uh, they call them Beckett burners. Some people call them in-shop burners. There's a lot of different names for them out there, but they're all basically the same thing as far as how they function. Now there's different sizes, there's different lengths, there's different styles, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can get into some of the old burners where you got ribbon burners, you got round ones, you got square ones, you've got uh, um, some of the old furnaces that had the big cast iron burners in them and things. Some of those are still out there. Um, you know, but this, uh, Beckett burner, that is going to be your most standard. That's why if your furnace has been replaced in the past several years, um, actually quite a few years, you're going to have an in shot or a Beckett burner in it. Um, so, you know, I would just want to talk about how they work a little bit because, you know, there's a lot of misconception on these things. Uh, cause for one, one of the biggest failures of these is not cleaning them. Lack of maintenance. I mean, you guys know that I preach on maintenance almost every video. Maintenance should be done every year on your gas furnace. Uh, it just makes it last longer. It's more efficient. A lot of times we can find issues before they turn into big issues, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, but burner cleaning is one of those main things. Now, if you have a contractor that comes to your house and does a maintenance on your system and does not remove and clean the burners in that furnace, you're getting ripped off. I'm, I'm sorry. There's no other way to sugarcoat that. Um, you know, you're paying this just the same amount as everybody else, but you're not getting the full uh, benefit of that maintenance. So, um, Tex, I'm talking to you out there too. If you are watching, clean the burners. It's extremely important to have the burners cleaned on a gas furnace. So make sure you're doing that. But these things love to get surface rust on them. I don't know if you can see that very well. It is hard to make that focus just right. Um, but you get surface rust on there because that burner sits in there. You got an orifice that sits in the end. That's on your gas manifold as it connects it to your gas valve. Gas valve opens, uh, brings gas through the manifold, puts it through the orifice. The orifice restricts how much gas is allowed to enter that burner. And then this outside part, it actually, as that goes through there and the fire burns, it's actually drawing oxygen in for combustion air through there. So you have air gas mixture inside the burner and then it comes out the face. Now, due to some of the... Um, I'm going to say chemicals uh, or minerals, uh, the makeup of gas itself, you know, I'm not, I, I don't know a lot of the uh, different uh, uh, chemicals and stuff that are in gas, be it natural gas, we have a lot of propane in my area, uh, whatever it is that's in there will actually cause that burner to start deteriorating a little bit. We'll start getting a little bit of rust uh, right there. I'm going to use my flame sensor to point. Um, we actually start getting rust on there and see all those little holes in there. If they start plugging up, well, that gas does not come out the same way because if you ever see a gas furnace run, when that flame comes out of that burner, it comes out and narrows down, almost looks like the tail of a, uh, the exhaust of a jet flying through the air. Um, it's, it's bigger at the face of the burner and then it angles down and it goes, shoots into the heat exchanger itself. Majority of furnaces these days have tubular heat exchangers in them and your inducer is actually drawing that air through, but helps pull um, that uh, flame through the heat exchanger, out your flue pipe and out the house and all that kind of stuff. Um, so if that starts getting rusted on there and deteriorated, then it cannot burn the same way. Now all of a sudden your flame is a little erratic. It goes around all over the place. You can actually get where it enters the heat exchanger, uh, that little piece. Uh, most furnaces, sometimes it's, it's built in one piece, uh, but it's actually called the corbel, uh, where the fire actually enters the heat exchanger itself. If you get that flame not quite burning straight in like it's supposed to, you get uh, what they call flame impingement. Uh, where that flame is actually hitting that edge of that uh, metal, it will actually burn up eventually and destroy that corbel. Some furnaces, the corbels are replaceable, sometimes they are not. At that point, if it is not replaceable, you have to replace the heat exchanger because uh, at that point it will uh, breach and leave an opening into the airstream. So at that point, your what's supposed to be inside the heat exchanger can now potentially be into the airstream. Uh, so you have the potential carbon monoxide in your space. 
So it's another reason why these need to be kept clean um, because if it is not burning correctly and, and burning improperly, the first stages of uh, uh, soot or anything like that are carbon monoxide, uh, which if we start burning poorly, uh, we produce carbon monoxide uh, in that airstream. Carbon monoxide, once it gets bad enough, all of a sudden now we're going to start building up soot. Uh, you set up a 90 plus uh, efficient gas furnace heat exchanger um, and you're going to have to put a new heat exchanger in. You're either replacing the heat exchanger or you're replacing the furnace. Um, you're not cleaning a, a sooted uh, modern gas furnace heat exchanger these days. Um, so that's another reason you want to make sure they're clean. Uh, the other thing you want to look for, you know, all those little holes that are in there, you want to make sure that they are clean. But then also, give them a little pointer here, you have that little channel right there, right? Because most of these furnaces, they do not have just one burner. Usually there's two, three, four, some of them have five. Uh, you know, in our area, a lot of the average is three to four burners sitting side by side. But that little channel that's right there is actually called a crossover channel. Years ago, they called them a crossover tube with some of the old burners because it literally was a little tube um, that what it does is when the flame comes out of the main part of that burner, you actually have a little bit of gas that travels down that, use my pointer, damn it. Uh, you actually have a little bit of gas that travels down that channel and you'll actually have a teeny tiny flame there But that flame is able to run across and jump to the next burner lights that burner lights the next one on on and on so forth and until they're all lit, right? Because a lot of times what we have is when those burners start rusting like that and the crossover channels themselves rust Well, let's say you've got four burners in there that igniter actually only sits in front of the first burner. So if it's sitting there like that, it lights the first burner. And now that flame is supposed to go down, 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 down to the next one. Well, if you got a big chunk of rust in there or something or whatever is with that channel that it's obstructed, well, you get to the, it lights the first burner, lights the next burner, and then all of a sudden can't get to the third one. Well, now you've got two burners down there that are not burning. So at that point, they're just putting gas out. A lot of times you get delayed ignition where it's loud, kind of scary for people, things like that. Um, and also you get horrible improper burn um, and you know, obviously we do not want gas building up anywhere. So again, another reason uh, that those gas, those uh, furnace burners need to be clean, but that crossover channel, make sure it's cleaned out. Uh, a lot of times what I do is, you know, if it's still cleanable, it's not to the point that it needs to be replaced, you take a wire brush. Uh, and clean up the surface of that, get the surface rust off, it'll look like new again. And then these channel, channels, uh, crossover channels, uh, a lot of times I'll take a, a razor blade on like a utility knife and just scrape that um, blade through there because you don't want to put a screwdriver through there or anything like that because that's a fairly small channel. Uh, you don't want to take that channel and widen it because if you widen it, now all of a sudden that little bitty flame that's running across that channel all of a sudden just got bigger. And now you have, again, flame impingement on the entrance to your heat exchanger. Uh, so you're going to burn up a core bowl or you're going to burn up a heat exchanger or something like that. Creates a breach. Now we have potential for uh, extreme failure. You know, we have carbon monoxide um, or something like that. You know, there's potential for a lot of harm and damage to be done there. So do not... Uh, just open those up. I've talked to technicians. I've talked to homeowners uh, that said, you know, all that channel was rusted up. So I just stuck a screwdriver in there and I just twisted it around and got it to open up. And now the flame goes to every burner. Well, that's great. Now every burner runs. That's cool. But now you're, if you let it keep running that way, you are going to damage that furnace. Emergency situation, uh, you know, t t uh, technician does it, you know, opens them up a little bit to, uh, uh, buy us some time until we can get the right set of burners there to replace all the burners, whatever. But as far as any kind of normal cleaning, maintenance, anything like that, do not stick a screwdriver in there um, or anything that's any wider than, like I said, about a razor blade uh, is about the right size. Um, put that razor blade in there and you can pull and you will feel that rust chunks, those rust chunks break free. Um, and then the gas is going to flow through there just like it's supposed to. Um, but burners do have to be kept clean. Um, because you know, you got the surface rust, you got the channels, uh, and then you have to see where those little wings are on there. Um, that air gas mixture is actually coming uh, across those and that's what is lighting and keeping everything going all the way across from burner to burner. Um, and then once each burner is lit, they're capable of, of burning on their own. But, um, it's another misconception. A lot of times people don't realize that your igniter actually only lights your number one burner. Number one burner is always in front of the igniter. Uh, it's first on the manifold, so as soon as it gets gas to it, it lights, and then that flame actually lights or jumps across to each burner. It does it at an extremely fast rate, 
Um, so, you know, it looks like they all light at the same time, but it's actually the first burner is actually lighting all the other burners with the flame from it. So, um, you know, a couple thoughts on flame sensors there. If you have any questions or anything like that, as always, hit me up in the comments down there. Uh, but if you got anything, let me know. Otherwise, thank you and God bless. Hey guys, just want to let you know my new book is out there. It's available on Amazon for Kindle and paperback. Uh, it's pretty easy read, 62 pages of all your homeowner heating and air questions answered. So go ahead and check it out. Give it a review. Let me know what you think. Thank you and God bless.